Oh, hello, <laughs> and welcome to the Chef Life Presents. Today I'll be discussing Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein, originally published in 1961. Before we get into the review, you may be wondering, what is this doing on the Chef Life? Well, my friends, the Chef Life is and always has been a place to talk about all aspects of a chef's life. I started this book in January. It is now April. Yep. Successful way to accomplish some reading is just make it a habit. Do it at the same time each day, in the morning when you're having coffee, or at night when before you go to bed. This is the first book that I've read by Robert A. Heinlein. The premise of the story is that Earth sends a ship to uh, Mars where they have discovered Martians. They send this crew, and it's I think seven or eight couples that would deal with any problems that would arise and be able to uh, get there successfully and also successfully return home. Only when they return home, they bring back a uh, Martian with them. The main character in this, Stranger in a Strange Land, his name is Mike and he is a man from Mars. I thought it was very interesting that Highland used this Martian to examine many things within human culture. Mike's perspective being so different from a human perspective, uh, a lot of things strike him as very difficult. Uh, to he, he uses this word grok. There's no real translation from Martian to English, but essentially, essentially it means to fully understand something. In Martian society there are no possessions. There's no ownership, there's no land, and the bodies that we use are just vessels for the soul to exist within. The author has divided the book into five different sections, though I disagree. I think that you could divide it into simply three sections. The first section would be about his arrival on Earth and all of his journeys into uh, up to the point where he understands and becomes aware of himself as a self. The second part of this book is after he has gained awareness of his self. The third part is what mainly focusing on the religion of the Man from Mars. The Man from Mars is introduced and takes an interest in this uh, new uh, Christian movement called the Fosterites. Jubal attempts to protect him from religion, but he's also aware that Mike will have to become a man of himself, and so he succumbs to answering questions, which eventually leads to uh, accepting an invitation to go to the main church of the Fosterites. While they are there, they're given alcohol from the bar, there's crazy dancing going on, uh, there's a light show, uh, there's everything that you could think of at a rock concert. You also learn that there are certain levels of the church. The first part that you enter into that anybody can go to, and then once you join the church you're allowed to go to a deeper, more exclusive uh, church for a deeper faith, deeper understanding of what it is. The last third of the book really focuses on Mike's church, Mike's religion. He develops this almost commune, and he bases it on nine levels or layers. As he chooses people from the crowd to move to the next levels, he basically is trying to teach them how to be happy. One of the main things that everybody has to learn is how to speak Martian. I compare this to in Islam, how you can read a translation of the Quran, but until you read it in Arabic, you don't really grok in fullness. You don't really understand the complexity of everything that it means. But what's most important to this is the connection that is made with other people. If you all understand Martian, then you all understand each other. I thought this book was great for a number of reasons, but I'm going to basically narrow it down to two things. The first half of the book I found very exciting to read. It was very much uh, action-based and you, you didn't really know what was going to happen next, but there was still philosophy. And that's the main reason why I like the book. That's the second reason I like the book is because there's so much philosophical debate about some of these great topics. And for people out there that criticize science fiction or that they don't like to read it or don't enjoy watching it or whatever it is, um, I just don't. To me it doesn't make sense because it's such a wonderful tool to be able to talk about some of these incredibly sensitive issues like religion without having it have a direct impact on people that are here today. Nobody has an emotional attachment to 
a religion from a man from Mars. Through that medium, you can discuss so many of the ideas about what it is to believe in a god. After reading this book, I still have a lot of hmm moments where I catch myself just thinking about what it is that I digested. I feel like there's so much meat on the bones in this book, and that's why I would recommend it for somebody to read. I still know now that I do not grok in fullness this book, and it will take lots of personal reflection in order to get everything out of it. Thank you for watching. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it's right here.